Okay, so wrangling the WordPress template hierarchy like a boss. And I understand that there's some people here who are applicants today who did not raise their hand, so you're going to learn some things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start from the top um, of the WordPress hierarchy, um, the template hierarchy. Um, if anyone's encountered the, uh, the actual uh, graph on the codex, then they know that can be quite confusing. And so maybe some of you people who raised your hand or did not actually saw that and then quickly closed the tab. It was just too overwhelming. <laughs> so we'll start from the top. And the top is there's a file called the index.php. And the index.php, um, uh-oh. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, see, um, because I don't have my notes, I didn't realize I had included that really horrible uh, graph <laughs> that you're supposed to gather the information from the template hierarchy from this graph. And so it's very confusing. And um, for a more detailed explanation of the template hierarchy, um, a theme is made up of many parts. And they're going to be thrown together to create your pages and your posts. So they work together, as I said, to create the pages and posts for your visitors. And, and you're supposed to gather how that works from this graph, which A, you're never going to actually, you know. Wait, I need to actually, hold on a minute. Before I go any further, I just need to take a deep breath. Realize I don't have my notes. <laughs> like really let that sink in. <laughs> I don't have my notes. OK, so how does WordPress know about the template hierarchy and what files to actually produce for your site? It's something called what I like to call is query powder. Not curry powder, but query power. <laughs> query power is basically WordPress and your theme have gotten together in a boardroom somewhere. And they've decided we have a naming convention that we're going to follow. And when you make a template file, I'm going to know it's there and I'm going to find it. So we're going to start from the first file that WordPress knows about, and that would be the index.php. Now, the index.php is the ultimate freelancer in this business. It does everything. This file will produce your post, your pages, your archives, anything, because everything's in it. And so if you have nothing else in your theme but index.php, you're going to use that to, sh to produce or display all your pages. The only thing with that is it's, it's really boring. It often includes just a basic loop. Sometimes it includes comments. And I know you guys have encountered a site where you're on the contact page and there's a comment box underneath. And, 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 and you're like, why would I comment further? I already sent a you know, I sent something in. So that's because someone has um, purchased a theme and they're just using it as is. And they don't realize that they could actually make a contact.php file if they like. So what we really want to do is we want to kind of send index.php on a vacation, make it work part time. Uh, and we'll do that as we'll hire something or someone. Singular.php. Once we hire singular.php, index.php doesn't have much to do. Uh, singular is going to take care of, and actually, singular is a new position. Let's let you guys know. Um, it's a new since WordPress 4.3. Um, in case you guys noticed a little message on the bottom of your screen when you updated, it said something about this. And those who didn't raise their hand just said, I don't need to know about that. It's OK. I'll just ignore that. <laughs> but it did mention that. And, it, and it mentioned it about a month ago before my talk. So I'm like, great. I can give them new, new information. So um, Singular needs new employees to help out, though. Because what Singular is going to do now is it's going to handle all the work go back to her. It's going to handle all the work for pages and post. So index.php now can just work on archives and maybe even that comment list that shows up or the author's pages. Uh, Singular.php has been hired to deal with your post and your pages. But she doesn't want to do it all by herself. So she hired page.php. So page.php is going to seriously take his cubicle and just sit there and deal with your static pages. 
So right now we have index.php has an underling called Singular. Singular realizes that they need to delegate, so they're delegating pages to page. Then there's someone on the job for your post. Sometimes this position is expected to be called the post.php, but it's not. <laughs> it's the single.php because it's going to be showing the single view of everything that's not a page. So it's going to be showing the single view of your post, your blog post, and anything like a custom post type that you created. So remember now, single still likes comments. <laughs> so if you made a post, custom post type, uh, it's going to have comments on the bottom unless you want to deal and kind of take those out for both. There's also another person we can get on the job called archive.php. This person is going to list your blog post and he's going to also list all your custom post types that you created. And now index.php has three jobs it doesn't have to do. It's now going to go off, for real. It can go off a lot. <laughs> and so, so, but we're going to concentrate on single now because single has more work to do. The pages, they're done. I mean, there's more things you can do. You can narrow in on the page ID. You can have page dash ID number dash dot PHP if you want a sp specific page that you'd like to uh, address with a different layout. Uh, but most people don't do that. So, but we do deal with single.php because in some themes, we've created our own custom post types, uh, like book or portfolio item or music or album or movie. We've created those because we now have different types of content. So I like to plug one of my friends. <laughs> this is a site I'm currently working on, and he's a book, children's book author. And I had to create a custom post type called books. Uh, I did not want his book pages to look like blog posts. So I created what's called a single, or actually I hired, let's keep this going. We hired single-book.php. Uh, this person's only going to deal with post types that concern books. So we had single, which was handling post and all your custom post types. But that turned out to be just too vague and broad for that job position. So now we hired another individual with more specialized skills. And this individual will only concentrate on books. And so now, a book page does not look like your average blog post. It looks like a page that's actually advertising a book. And so this is what this person's doing. He's throwing out all that. WordPress is coming, knocking. It's like, I need books. Um, do you have the actual individual who can provide the skill <laughs> in this business to produce that page? And that's what's going on. Also, um, on the same site, we'd like to list all the books, but we wouldn't want them listed like a blog. We wouldn't want them with a thumbnail and then a read more. We could, but that's kind of boring. Everybody's seen that because when you attach, when you install a theme, a lot of times you just take it as it is and they use the blog posting entries and archives for almost everything that you're using in the theme. And so that's when it gets a little boring. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hire archive-book. So remember, we had archive.php was handling all the archives. But if we want to get more specific, we'd have to get another specialist, another specialist to just concentrate on archive-book. So now we have a simpler hierarchy to actually concern ourselves with instead of all the ones, all the, all the, all the entries that were in that major it's not a mess, it's actually a beautiful graph. <laughs> but it's just a lot of information that you don't need right off the bat so you can get a grasp of what's going on. So this simple uh, hierarchical graph will just show you what we've already covered, which is the, the index.php is the number one page where everything will arrive and display. And then once that is, you know, we diversify the, um, the skills or, or the, um, the jobs that it was 
was that it was actually uh, taking over. We now have <laughs> we now have files. I'm going to go back to files instead of people. And we now have files taking care of those. We have singular.php, which is taking care of your pages and your and your post. And we have an archive, which now can take care of specific archives if you make a file and you keep the naming convention. And so the important part about this is keeping the convention, the names, the singular, the archive, and the single. Those have to be in the file name. If they're not in the file name, then WordPress can't keep its agreement and actually uh, produce that file and its content for you. And so we'll go back to Bruce's site again. And I, as you noticed, there was a home page. And the home page has a specific layout. And so there are also some template files that are, I like to call them specialist, because they can actually stop uh, your clients from kind of messing up your site. <laughs> so one of those is called frontpage.php. So when you create a file called the front page, the front page will be the front page of the website. No matter what happens in the admin, if someone wants to turn on a different uh, template for the home page, they accidentally stumble across these options that they can play around with, and they turn on the gallery page for your home page. Sometimes that's what shows up if you're, if, they're, if you're allowed to do that. But if you create a front page template, it doesn't matter what they're doing in the back end, because that, this, the existence of that template means that the front page of your website will be the code that is on that template. The other one is home.php. Um, a lot of times, this one can, can be confusing because home is not the home page. Home is the home of your blog post archive. And I think this stems from WordPress being a blogging software from the beginning. <laughs> and uh, it just might be hard to extract that as the heart of everything um, after they've built on. And so home, if you would like your blog post listing to look a little different than normal, you could always just put a home.php, and then all of a sudden, whatever is in that file is now what's going to show up for your home, your archive. The um, irony of it is there's nothing in there. It's going to be a white page. So <laughs> that's a good way to test to see if your file's working. <laughs> so you just make it, and uh, don't put anything in it, and then refresh, and home page or home the archive is blank. And you're like, oh, it's working. So we hired her. <laughs> She's home. <laughs> OK, so then there's also, we have our whole staff now. But there's some resources that they can use. And these are called template parts. And the difference between a template part and a template is that template parts can't stand alone. A template part is like subsidiary or, or extra resources or loops or pieces of a page that you can call in. Uh, you know some of them. There's header.php that you call in, get header. We also have sidebar that you, you've seen in your themes that you're calling in, and footer. The cool thing about that is that these pieces, when you call them in, they, sh they can show up on any page that you want. And so usually, you show your, the header and the footer, you're pulling them in on every page. But you only edit that one file if you need to change the footer of your whole site. That's the cool thing about WordPress and PHP, is that, and these templates and the parts, is that you only have to edit one thing, and the entire 1,000-page site is taken care of. <laughs> so uh, a lot of template parts can be anything, can have anything in them. They can have like a basic loop. They can just have some static HTML. You can call them whatever you want. Um, if you have a specific loop that you'd like to see in a small box on the left bottom corner of your website, you can call that loop.php. And then you can put a loop in there, call it in. This is how you would call it. This is a simple tag. Get template part, and then you throw in the slug of your file. And it's there. So we can go back to Bruce's page again. This is his home page. And there's a lot going on on this page. And we probably would have filled it with hordes of code. And maybe he's later on he says, I want my newest book at the top. I don't want the author thing at the top. So you got to dig through all the code and kind of move things around. 
Well, if you have template parts, all you do is pull these template parts into a very simple, basic, coded file. This is his homepage. That's all that's in the file for frontpage.php. And one of the pieces here would be the school visit. I'm just pulling in this piece of code. And if I wanted to um, change any of this, all I would do was move the lines around. <laughs> so if you get it on the bottom <coughs> sidebar at the top or whatever. And, so it, and if I wanted to just uh, address any of the code, I'll just go into the template part and, and mess with that instead of this whole page of code. So template parts also have a hierarchy. So you can start off with one called constant.php. And uh, you may have seen this, especially if you're using underscores. And, and anybody who here who raised their hand and said they're developing, please, if you're not using underscores, at least investigate it. <laughs> because it's definitely um, hitting the ground floor. And you can advance very quickly <laughs> with whatever development you want to do. And so they do make use of the content.php. And basically, that's the content of the page. It's the loop that concludes the content. And so as in the template files, the full template files, you can have a hierarchy. You can also have it with your template parts. So there's a default content where all the content is called when you call that template part. But then maybe you'd like to modify it for books. And so you make content-book just like we did archive-book or single-book. And so WordPress will come through and it'll look for the content. And then uh, it, it actually, what it does, it comes through the, from the bottom up. It looks for more of specific um, files. And then when it doesn't find your specific file, then it will end at the default. And so you can have loops. And once again, like you can make a hierarchy for your loops. And so Finally, it's a good idea if you don't want to get lost in your templates, because this can happen if you create a whole bunch of them and you're very specific, like I do. I like to be very specific and very custom with the work that I do. And so I have a lot of template files. And sometimes I'm working away at one, and then I refresh, and nothing happens on the page. And I keep refreshing, and I add some more code. After a while, and I should have done this in the beginning, uh, I might have wanted to put a little note, especially in the blank one, future home of. Like, right? <laughs> the future home of my book archive. Future home of the single book page. So that when I'm playing around and I'm hitting links and I'm uh, moving around and I get that blank page, it also tells me what template I'm on. So it's a good idea that when you create these to actually fill them with that first. And then come back later and put the code in, because at least you'll know you're on the same page. And that's what really want to do. And I hope, <laughs> I hope what the next slide is going to have is just my name and my, t my Twitter handle. Yes! <laughs> because that was crazy. <laughs> and, um, and then God forbid you guys can go on that WCLAX.reviews. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and review um, um, my challenge. This was Survivor. This is not WordPress up here. This was Survivor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So does anyone? I had ten minutes for questions. See, that was all worked out because my my little talk was little. Um, what was that? You did a this. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. I wanted to show you guys how it, is, how it works. There's some speakers out here later on today and tomorrow. This, you can handle this difficulty stuff. I'm just saying. OK. So you. If this is out of scope, no worries. Um, I'm a graphic designer, too. So I'm interested to know where the CSS and the all the styling fall into the template. Well, C um, yeah. okay, well CSS and, um, and your templates. Um, Talk about the layout. Yeah, yeah. CSS is, is, is its own division and has its own staff. <laughs> Very small. <laughs> but uh, this, the, the styling and, and structure of a website, they, they're not actually meshed. Um, so, uh, what I like to, 
my little uh, symbolism for a website is that there's um, the skeleton, which is your HTML, um, which is magically composed by PHP um, in this case. And then there's the clothing or the skin, and that's what CSS is doing. It's just cloaking the skeleton. And of course, then the spirit of it all is just the JavaScript, which gives it life. So you're just going to be doing a CSS file, style.css, just like any website where it's its, its own individual style uh, file, and you're going to be putting classes and IDs in the code. And so these template parts, it's just further breaking down what PHP does anyway, which takes your basic header and footer and throws it together on your server. You're just breaking it down in smaller pieces so you can manage it, maybe this one little corner, like the social media icons, and then snatch it out when you don't want it anymore. Am I correct? PHP only tells the content where it's going to be. Yeah. OK, so PHP is a server-side language, um, meaning that on the server, it takes all of its parts, and it glues them together, and then shoves them out to the www. So I think uh, he's back there. PHP, PHP, that only kicks in if you have WordPress settings general set to show static page? No, that guy at that desk who said, um, you know, looked at you kind of funny. You're not getting past this desk no matter what settings you have. So, so basically, OK, I see what you're saying. So if you have um, the static, you're talking about static general, the general settings where it's like static? Yeah, picture. OK, static OK, so, so yes. If you're not doing just, which is rare now, just your blog as the home page, and you have a static home page set, your front page will take whatever that home page is. In fact, it, will, it might even take your blog page, too, because it's literally the template that says this is the front page of the website, no matter what's going to be on it. Whether it's that static page or Yeah. Blog. So if you have nothing in it, even your blog post is going to be a blank page. OK. Yeah. So. Thanks. All right. And then. Question. So what, what do you find effective to go from when you have Nice looking HTML, but then when you pull back the covers and you showed us the PHP code, the, the, the template pieces, of to be able to kind of deconstruct that HTML and, this, and the styles and things like that, the divs into the code so that it's embedded in all these template parts so that when it's reassembled back together, it looks nice. Uh, I was wondering what that, that process that That takes a lot of practice because it's like when you look under the hood of a car and you see a lot of tubes and. <laughs> <laughs> and wires and things, and you're like, oh my god, I'm going to the mechanic. Uh, after a while, if you've changed the oil and done other things, then you know what parts you can touch and are safe. Uh, so I would highly suggest anyone who says they're developing or building a site needs to touch PHP. Because it will not only empower you, because then you won't have to take your car to mechanic all the time for the smallest fix, um, or something that happens like a semicolon disappears and you can freak out because it's a white page. Um, but you'll be able to address an issue that your client has, like they want a specific thing, and you can go to the codex and find the tag, or you just put it in. So after a while, uh, you will be able to see that HTML is actually cloaking a lot of the PHP and that things that are happening on the site, like maybe a recent post or uh, post meta and all that, they're just little tags. And, and then after a while, you realize, oh, those tags are generated somewhere. And then you find a functions file where the function that you're using. And then you can see, oh, inside that function is all the HTML for the meta. And I can totally change that. So, so uh, it just takes a lot of exposure and practice. And so uh, I know that a lot of people like to use things like Genesis and Thesis. And, but those are fine. But please, at some point, just for a hobby, try to build your own theme. I really highly suggest that. <laughs> OK. Uh, actually, I just wanted to throw out a contribution. Just something I stumbled upon a few months ago, a great series of tutorials that kind of get your feet wet in building a theme called uh, Learn Web Code on YouTube. And this, this guy did a great job with like just to kind of be well with it. And then you apply all the stuff that we've seen here. So like, OK, here's, a, here's an example of you know, plugging this in and, and how to set up the so Learn Web Code. Thanks.
Thank you. And then you've raised your hand. Could you please go back to the slide that shows the, um, the code for retrieving? Um, I, think, I think you might have just passed it. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> just a little slow. Yeah, it's so simple. And so it's, it's different than get header, get footer, get sidebar. Those are inbred, tied to WordPress. That's why they don't use template part. And so just do a search in the codex or on the web, and people will elaborate on this. And there's also where I said that you could have a hierarchy to it, where it's content.php, and then you can have content-book. Part of the uh, argument in the slug can be the slug itself, which is content, then a comma, and then the, the part that differentiates, like book or whatever. So I've seen that done too. So, so yeah, and I don't know how much time. We're done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>